All right, everybody, today we're going to talk about the Unreal Engine. And this video is specifically targeted toward people who are really brand new noobs. Someone who wants to program, they want to make video games, they have an idea, they're inspired, they see all of the cool graphics, and they want to get in there and learn how to do it. I've been a developer for over 20 years now. I've written applications in all different sorts of programming languages. And about two years ago, I decided that I was going to teach myself the Unreal Engine. I'm not disappointed that I did this. I still haven't released a game, but I have, and I will show you all of the things that I have done over the last two years. In that time, I have taught myself a lot about the engine, all the supporting software, the workflows that are required um, in order to produce a game. And I've also spent a fair amount of time producing demonstration reels and just showcasing some of the work that I have done. Throughout this video, I'll be showing you a lot of that. And um, I'm going to talk through some of the major systems and highlights of your journey to understanding the Unreal Engine um, over, I would say, the first six months. Uh, depending on how aggressive you are and how much time you spend, obviously you can shorten or lengthen the amount of time it takes you to learn it. Um, but uh, I'm gonna go through the basics here. So let's start with the most simple, download and installation in that uh, you basically need to go out, get yourself an Epic Games uh, an account, download the, uh, the software, and choose your engine to uh, download the latest version of the Unreal Engine, uh, get it installed on your computer, and you're good to go. Uh, if you get stuck at that step, there's no helping you. You should probably just move on because uh, this is probably the simplest part of the whole process. Um, next step... I want to talk about some additional software. I'll reference it more later, but I wanted you to be aware that just because you have the Unreal Engine, it provides you an enormous leap forward in being able to produce a game. But there are still a variety of other packages for doing 3D modeling, audio editing, uh, image editing, um, let's see, uh, yeah, uh, animations. Animations is a big one as well. Um, generating textures and materials, um, painting, 3D objects. So uh, I'm going to provide a list of the software that I have used, and uh, I'll put that up on the screen here. I'm kind of recording this as just a me describing everything, and then I'm going to overlay all the video on top of that. So... Uh, Anyway, I'll put up the list of all the different items that I use, but as we go through each of the steps, I'll show you where they apply. Okay, moving on, um, coding. So either you know how to code or you don't know how to code. If you know how to code a little bit in any like lower level language like C, C++, Java, anything like that, um, you'll be you'll be happy to know that you can use C++. And, and having some basic knowledge of any programming ideas uh, will get you a long way in this, in this environment. There is the unique thing to the Unreal Engine called blueprints. And blueprints are basically a visual representation of uh, coding. And so if you understand coding, Blueprints will make a lot of sense out of the gate. And you'll also find that sometimes just coding it in C++ is a lot easier than creating it in the Blueprint. Um, go do your research. Look at Blueprints. I'll show you some uh, you know, pictures of, of the two here. But um, it's definitely an area where Blueprints were really designed for uh, people that weren't doing low-level programming. I find that I do both. 
Uh, in some cases, blueprints are faster, and so I'll do it that way. In other cases, um, I, I find that C++ is, while possibly a little more keystrokes, it's definitely the way to go for the, for the problem that I'm trying to solve. The next thing is, I'm going to go over the major systems within the Unreal Engine. You can spend an enormous amount of time learning and understanding the intricacies of each one of these systems. So we have a lighting system. We have particle systems. We have audio systems. We have movement and behavior systems, mostly for like artificial intelligence. We have uh, the creating meshes, uh, static and also skeletal meshes, uh, which is tied back to 3D modeling. Uh, there are systems for handling and manipulating those. Um, the material, the, the wrapping around the meshes that provides all the, the color and, and what the models look like, the textures that go into there, there's a, there's a very extensive system for creating materials from textures and a lot of different things that you can do in there. Animating your skeletal meshes, huge amounts of effort can go into that. Uh, landscapes, so if you want to create sort of indoor or outdoor landscapes, tons of uh, uh, effort can be put into these. Each one of these systems you will encounter you will need to understand, but I highly encourage you to stick with the minimal viable product, the MVP, for your first effort because I learned the hard way, even being a programmer with a lot of experience in, uh, in reducing scope and, and understanding how long things are going to take, I found myself fascinated by each one of these systems and spending an enormous amount of time inside them, learning them from the inside out, uh, creating demonstrations with them, practicing, trying different things, following people's YouTube uh, tutorials online, which I will encourage you all to do. Uh, these are some of the best resources you'll find are on YouTube and, and I appreciate all of the people whose videos I watched because uh, it, it would have been very difficult without them. Um, there are a lot of systems in the Unreal Engine. Each one of them is providing you a tool that makes your life easier. The problem is sometimes you don't understand how it's making your life easier and you can complicate things real quickly by thinking you're doing something that you, know, you have to do. Uh, when in reality, the problem can be solved much easier. Part of that's just experience and uh, you will have to grow and learn as, as your journey continues, but definitely limit your time in each one of these items. And if you find yourself going down a rabbit hole or a rat hole, which you will, um, stop yourself, take a break, back out, and uh, try to keep it to the minimum because you will, you will get lost in this. Um, I, I've been working at this about two years now. I wouldn't say it's because I got totally sidetracked. Some of it is that um, I was trying to do a lot of different things. And, and so reducing your scope's always a good idea. Um, but uh, I definitely spent my fair amount of time going off on tangents that I didn't need to. <clears throat> okay, moving on. The next big thing that I want to talk about is, um, and I'll, I'll go through the, the systems a little bit more, but I want to talk about royalty-free assets. And this comes up a lot because once you start developing something, and let's say you get an idea for what kind of game you want to develop, the first thing you'll come across is, hey, I need 3D assets. I need materials for textures. Uh, I need textures for materials, sorry. I need uh, audio, uh, sound effects, background music. I need um, 
maybe some images or 2D sprites, you know, if you're making a, a 2D game. Uh, these assets are difficult to find, and the reason they're difficult is there are a lot of sites that have them. There's also a lot of legal licensing terminology that comes with each of the sites. Some of them are easier than others, and also just finding them can be complicated. I'm going to start compiling a list of where I have found all of these assets and where I find it the easiest to use. There's also many free sites, or sorry, there's many sites that offer assets, uh, which are you can buy, and they also offer a few teaser assets, which are free. And that's great, I appreciate them doing that, but you will find that there's a lot of lower quality items uh, in the free bucket. Then you start getting the idea that you'll download free assets and modify them, which gets back to the idea that you need additional software to help you do this. Um, do your best, unless you're experienced in, in creating your own assets, uh, try to be careful of the amount of time you spend doing that. Creating 3D models is not easy. There's a lot that goes into it, and you can spend an enormous amount of time trying to understand UV mapping and why your mesh doesn't import correctly and why the textures don't look right, etc., etc., etc. All of these systems have a lot going on. And um, I recommend you use assets that other people have built and try to craft your game ideas around them um, or partner with someone who is uh, more experienced in development of 3D audio image assets. Um, and if you can do that, that's great. I was doing all this by myself and therefore um, relying on other people's assets who I could trust were royalty free. Uh, was a great, great thing for me to do. Um, the next big thing that I think we should talk about is where to go to for help. You will immediately find out that documentation, while available for the Unreal Engine, it's not as robust as other programming uh, assets, you know, uh, languages that I've used. They will show you some information uh, but they don't always show you really any example of how to do it. I think they're trying and they're getting better at providing some tutorials. Definitely there are some very long one hour plus tutorials on YouTube sponsored by Epic Games evangelists or people that work within the company that have a lot of experience. Um, those are great resources, but they do take a lot of time and there's also a lot of, uh, they don't really cut to the chase sometimes. Some of the conversations, they are kind of sprinkled with a lot of dialogue and joking around, which is fine. But when you have a limited time to learn, uh, it just kind of gets in the way. So you end up skipping through YouTube videos kind of quickly to get over the, uh, the boring stuff and get to the real meat of the, of the lesson. Um, the Unreal Engine forums are helpful, but I found more often that I will post a question and it will go unanswered for months. And I've moved on since then and uh, someone, you know, out of the blue will answer my question or try to answer my question. And sometimes I've even forgotten what I asked uh, at that point. So I haven't had a lot of success. Um, I have had success in... Uh, once people do answer questions, it sits out on the internet forever. So eventually someone will answer it and you can find those when you have trouble. But getting your own questions answered, that is way more difficult. But if you can do a Google search, find other people's questions that have been answered, it can sometimes help you quite a bit. Um, the next thing source control. So once you've developed your code and you've invested all of this time 
you've learned and you've been working hard, you definitely don't want to suffer a hardware failure and have your hard drive crash and blow away your entire project, all of the assets that you've worked so hard to find, um, to download, to integrate into your project. You definitely want to have some backups of your source code and your, your, your Unreal Engine project in the event that you crash that you can recover that. Otherwise, I feel if someone got really far into a project and lost that information, they probably would give up permanently because it's such a complicated uh, thing that starting over would be difficult. Um, you can do it, obviously you can, and most people probably would if they've invested that much time. But seriously, use source control. Um, either back up your code to another hard drive or, C or RAID or a cloud drive service would be great. Or um, I use Amazon uh, AWS Code Commit. Uh, that's a, a service using Git repositories. It works just fine for Unreal Engine. I know Perforce is another popular source control, but I don't know much about that one. I've never used it. So I did with, you know, what I knew and uh, I used what I knew and that was Git. Um, definitely explore source control. If you've never used source control, it basically means that it's retaining a copy and versions of the check-ins that you do. So you check out your code, you make your changes, you check it back in and you're good to go. Um, definitely need to invest in a source control plan. The last thing I'm going to talk about is licensing. Licensing is, a, you will come across this a lot when it comes to your royalty-free assets. Many times they will provide assets for free, but you have to look and see what type of license is associated with the asset. Um, the easiest one to understand are the Creative Commons Zero licenses. These licenses basically mean it's in the public domain and you can use the asset in any way that you see fit, commercially, privately, however you want to use it, you can modify it, etc. Then you start getting into a lot of the new licensing schemes. I'll list some of them up on the, uh, on the video here, the names of them. I am not a legal expert. You need to do your homework on this stuff but uh, many of them require attribution. So they say that you can use this asset if you give me credit for it, right? And that's fine. I don't mind those quite so much. The problem is when you have a game with maybe hundreds of assets, I'm not really sure as an individual indie game developer, how do you maintain a list of all the people you have to provide attribution to, right? And so where do you stick that in your in your credits or something? I'm not really sure. It's something I've, I, I'm going to cross that bridge when I get to it. But it's an important thing. And you definitely don't want to get your game out there and then discover that you maybe inadvertently used an asset that you shouldn't have. Maybe you don't have the right licensing for it. Maybe you weren't allowed to use it or you used it, but you didn't attribute it. So it's a sticky, sticky thing. You definitely don't want to take your masterpiece and, you know, have a bad experience with some licensing uh, scandal after you have created it, right? So I try to keep track and only deal with things that are royalty free. And if they're attribution required, I explicitly mark them down and keep that in a single place. Um, but uh, in, in the end, these are all of the topics that you will learn, you'll start getting into. But as a noob, I want you to start thinking about this stuff. Um, a, a couple other things. One thing that I didn't go over is set your expectations early. Um, I've watched a fair amount of development videos about people creating games, people that have been successful, people that have been unsuccessful. And um, one of the biggest things is you need to set your expectations. Um, 
and and be realistic about it. You're not going to start off as a noob by downloading the Unreal Engine and popping out Fortnite in two months. It's not going to happen. You need to temper yourself. You need to set some small goals and you need to make sure that, you know, you're not trying to incorporate too much too early. Um, I'm, I think we're all guilty of it. We have lots of ideas. We're creative. We want to create something beautiful, something fun. And uh, next thing you know, it's six months later and you're looking around and you're not sure why you haven't progressed, right? Um, you have progressed. You've spent a lot of time teaching yourself and learning and being more masterful in one area. But, you know, overall, you still didn't produce a game. Um, I forgot the guy's name. I'll try to find it. Uh, I've watched a fair amount of his uh, indie game development videos. And one of the things he said was the best thing or the, the best thing you can do, you know, as a new indie developer is release a game. And uh, I, I think that holds a lot of truth. And I'm still trying to get there myself. But um, I can tell you that reducing your scope way down think in time frames of your first game in in like no more than three months to develop uh go go to that you're gonna leave a lot on the table it, it's gonna be a, a minimal effort it's not gonna look as good as you want it's not gonna sound as good as you want it's not going to play as well as you want but you will actually release a game uh and, and that will be a good thing. There's probably another area to the noob thing. I'm not going to go into it right now because there's too much. And uh, I, I really you know want to stick this with just getting to the point where you finish a game. And, and do it, you know, in, in a reasonable amount of time with the, you know, an efficient uh, workflow is once you have finished your game, where do you deliver and how do you distribute your game? I think that's probably a whole nother topic. And honestly, I'm not there yet. So I'm not going to make that video. But everything that I've talked about here, uh, I am uh, intimate with. I've spent a lot of time. I And, I, and I've shown you as I've given you this speech, um, you will, you can see some of the work that I've created. And so uh, I felt confident talking to you about this topic. When it comes to distributing, I'll get there, uh, but I'm not quite ready to make that video yet. Um, in the end, I love video game development. I have since I was a young, young man, and uh, I still love it. The tools have changed, but all the concepts are the same. And I, uh, I, I'm going to continue to produce uh, compelling uh, content to help you, to help myself, and. Uh, you know, hopefully uh, that'll that'll keep me happy for uh, quite some time. So I hope you enjoyed this. It's not a very technical, detailed things, but I will leave that to some of the other videos that I create where I go into the code. I talk about specific systems, whether it's lighting or particles or audio or movement. And uh, and additionally, there are tons of other YouTube video resources out there. I just wanted to give you an overview of the things that you should be thinking about as a noob because most of the time all you're thinking is this video game is going to be awesome because I thought about it and uh, I just wanted to you know I want you to take that and overlay it with these thoughts and you will be hopefully more prepared and more successful because of it thank you I hope you appreciated this uh, sort of free flow uh, diatribe that I uh, came up with today. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe. I'm trying to grow my channel and uh, any feedback you have, I'd, I'd love to hear it. Have a great day. Good luck. Bye.